This week over on Twitter, a fraudulent medical video went viral. I guess I should say it's a series of videos all about the same supposed discovery. One of them has over 8 million views. Here is the main claim these videos are making. So what you see here is a, a Pfizer uh, BioNTech COVID-19 injection when it was first put on a slide. And, and in the background, you see all of these blinking lights and extreme activity. Tell us what the flashing dots are in the background. This is what's called nano and micro robots that are communicating with each other via light signal, and they are collaborating to self-assemble these larger structures that are microchips. Now, depending on how familiar you are with microscopes and with science in general, this video, people either believe it or they understand the mistake that this doctor made when she was looking at her samples. She is using a setup called dark field microscopy. That's the setup that I'm using right here with this microscope as well. This is not hard to do. I'm gonna show you how to do it here in a little bit. You can take just a normal light field microscope like you're used to in high school, and you can transform it into a dark field microscope. And it's very, very cool. It almost looks like outer space. The sample that I'm looking at is mud from my backyard. You can see all the little organisms here really nicely. But most importantly for today, what you've probably already noticed in the background are little blinking lights. Very similar to the blinking lights that she found in the vaccine that she thinks are nanobots. And it's funny, if you, if you watch the entire video, she starts out by saying that she found these sparkling nanobots in the vaccine. Then she decided to go look at people's blood, people's blood who had taken the vaccine. And she found that the nanobots were in their blood as well. Then she looked at people who never had the vaccine and she found the nanobots in their blood too. And she's like, oh my goodness, this is horrible. The vaccine is now everywhere. Everyone is infected with it. Of course, here you might be terrified thinking that, oh my gosh, the nanobots are in the mud in John's backyard too. Look, they're everywhere. But of course, that's not the case. This twinkling that we see in the background, this is just a normal background side effect in dark field microscopy. What's going on here? If I look at it at a higher resolution, you can see better what's happening. Uh, notice first that dark field microscopy, even though it says dark in the name, it actually uses light. I have a light down here and it's a, it's a bright light. I'll explain why it's called dark field here in a minute, but what you can see when we zoom in really close at a sample, is that those sparkles are caused by really tiny little minerals that are drifting in the water that just tremble. They tremble like this because of what we call Brownian motion. Water molecules are vibrating. Lots of tiny, tiny, tiny water molecules, way smaller than these particles. These water vibrations end up causing these particles. They have to be really, really small particles to move like this. And when they catch the light from our light bulb, they fling it at the camera in this case, or the eye if you're looking at this, you know, with your eye instead of with the camera. And it gives you this blinking artifact. This doctor who she admits she's new to microscopes, she has confused Brownian motion with self-assembling nanobots. Tell us what the flashing dots are in the background. This is what's called nano and micro robots that are communicating with each other via light signal. Wrong. This is Brownian motion, the thing we all learned about in middle school science class. I want to point out the fact that I am not telling you that I know that the vaccines are safe. I don't have any special knowledge about these vaccines. The only thing I know is that she has confused Brownian motion of particles suspended in liquid for nanobots. I am not asking you to take my word for it. I am going to show you now how to see for yourself whether or not what I'm telling you is true. There are two ways to do this. There's one really easy way and one, eh, they're both easy, but one is, uh, you know, one requires a microscope. Not everybody has a microscope. So the, the easiest way to do this, if you don't have a microscope, is to just go onto YouTube and look up dark field microscopy. Look for videos that are older than my video. In fact, look for videos that are older than COVID, even way older than COVID. There are videos on YouTube of dark field microscopy that are like 10 years old, 14 years old, 16 years old. 
Find those videos, watch them, and ask yourself, do these videos have little sparkly things in them? If the answer is yes, return to my video, like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. The slightly more difficult way, but still pretty easy way to check if I'm lying, is to just get a microscope like this. If you don't have a microscope, maybe you could actually just go to your local high school and talk to one of the teachers and say, hey, I'm concerned about this thing. I want to fact check it. Can I use a microscope? They'll probably let you. Middle schools, high schools, community colleges, those are all good places to get a hold of a microscope. And what you need to do, let me show you the difference between light field microscopy and dark field microscopy. So we're doing, we've got it in dark field mode right now, but if I just go like this, now I need to adjust the light now, it's too bright. This is classic light field microscopy. This is what most people are used to. Hold on, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so it's easier to see. That right there, that is what most people are used to looking at, right? This is what you looked at in high school and in college. What's going on here with light field microscopy is I have nothing blocking the light. I've got the light down here. This above it is just a condenser. It's a lens that, that focuses that light onto my sample and up through the, the actual magnification tube. Here in my little, I have a little lens tray here. What I have is a piece of plastic, clear piece of plastic, and the tape to it is a dime. Just a dime, regular dime, 10 cent piece. You can use a penny, you can use, you can just cut out a little piece of paper that's shaped like a dime and put it on there. And you don't even need the clear piece of plastic. I did that because I, I, I like to be able to easily take this out and put it back in. You can actually just tape this to, to the bottom of the condenser. Super easy. You just need a dime or a penny and you just tape it on the bottom there. So you need, what do you need? You need some mud from your backyard or from someone else's backyard. You need a penny and you need a microscope. And if you have all of those things, you put them together, you slide that, you put that coin underneath your light, and then you adjust the light until the background turns black. And what's happening here, The background turns black and the, the sample pops out with this beautiful white. The coin is directly underneath your sample, but the coin is not as big as the light source. So some of that light is still able to creep over the sides of that coin and it's able to hit the sample. But that, that light that creeps over the side and hits the sample doesn't hit the lens up here. It misses the lens. So it only hits the sample, it misses the lens. So you get a nice black background. You're looking at the coin, the coin is black. It's black from your perspective because the light's behind it. But you're seeing the sample nice and illuminated, beautifully illuminated. And it's really, really neat. You get this, look at that. Some of these little critters, they, they glow blue. Some of them have sort of a orangish hue to them. It's really beautiful. And then of course, if I zoom in again, I can see that the minerals in the background, the minerals in the background are all around. They are vibrating according to the well-known principles of Brownian movement. Brownian movement, by the way, the guy who first discovered it, I guess his name was Brown. <laughs> I don't remember a whole lot about the history of this, but the one thing that I do remember is that he and most other people at the time thought that these little vibrating particles were animalcules, that's what they called them, little molecules that were alive. They thought that this was life moving. I mean, obviously in this mud, there is some life as well. The bigger things that we see jolting about. But the little minerals that are vibrating, that is not alive. And by the way, I wanna change samples here real quick. I wanna show you some pond scum because pond scum is way cooler. Pond scum doesn't usually have particles that are small enough to glitter. So we might not we might not see the glittering anymore, but we're gonna see some really, really cool animals. I was saying something about Brownian motion. Brownian motion, he studied it very carefully for a while 
and he realized that it was not life. It was just random movement of water molecules. And later on, Einstein, of all people, of course, of course it was Einstein, he figured out how to use Brownian movement to calculate the mass of a water molecule. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. So fun. I love microscopy. Definitely, you know, if, if you can, if you have access to a, to a microscope, do this. Do this little project. It is so fun. It's so fun. All you need is a penny and a microscope and some dirt, and you can have just hours of fun looking at this stuff. And it will help prevent you from f falling for hoaxes in the future. I mean, again, I don't know if this was a hoax. She might have been genuinely confused. Hopefully she was genuinely confused, because if this was a hoax, man, that's a dirty hoax. That is such a dirty hoax. The thing I find upsetting, imagine if you believe this for real. If you believe that everyone you know and love and care about is now infected with microscopic robots that are going to do who knows what to them, mind control them, turn them into zombies. <laughs> Some people live in a very, very demon-haunted world still in the year 2024. And, you know, we do have genuinely frightening technologies, genuinely terrifying things that are happening to people right now as a result of technology, these wars that are, that are being fought. It's really not that irrational of a fear. I mean, in this case, it was. But in general, this, this instinct to be suspicious of these new technologies, our species needs this instinct. Even when it, it misbehaves like it did in this case, there might be a time when the crazy conspiracy theorists are the only ones who survive, you know? That's not, there's not a zero chance of that being the case someday. So I don't know what to think about these sorts of things. I don't know what to do about these sorts of things. It's, it's complicated. It's frustrating. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that uh, you enjoyed my telling you how to fact check me. I hope you appreciate that. If people are being hateful in the comments, they probably didn't watch the whole video. They were probably triggered early on. Just be kind to them. Tell them to watch the full video. Make sure that they know that they can actually easily fact check me and how they can do that. Uh, be kind. People are scared. It's a weird time to be alive. It really is.